वेलकम बैक टू स्पेक्ट्रम क्लासेस दिस इज आवर सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन द टॉपिक एसिड एंड बेसिक रेडिकल्स इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट हाउ टू मेमोराइज दीज बेसिक रेडिकल्स इन डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स एंड दे आर ग्रुप रिएजेंट्स नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द अदर बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक सॉलिबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट एंड कॉमन आइन इफेक्ट हेयर आई एम शोइंग यू द रिलेटेड लैब एक्टिविटीज ऑल्सो So keep watching till the end. So let's start with the solubility product. Solubility product is represented by KSP, and uh, this concept I have already discussed in two of my videos. Ah, uh, in one I have discussed the detailed concept of solubility product, and in the second one I have discussed about the numerical problems based on solubility product. so you can go and check that videos first to understand this concept in more elaborated form i will also give the links of those videos in the description box now the solubility product so solubility product concept is applicable for the sparingly soluble salts and these salts dissociated in equilibrium here is the equilibrium sign here is a solubility product constant ksp and this ksp is equal to the concentration of ion a raised to the power its coefficient multiplied by ion b raised to the power y that is its coefficient so this is the solubility product formula this solubility product is important to determine whether the precipitation it will be formed or not if the solubility product constant is greater than the concentration of ionic product then the solution is unsaturated if it is equal to ionic product then it is just saturated and if the value of ksp is less than the ionic product then we get the precipitate for low or high value of ksp this ionic concentration is the determined factor for the precipitation i am here by showing you one lab activity so this is nacl solution to this solution i have added agno3 so here you can see no precipitation occur now i have added more agno3 till no precipitation occurs now i am adding some more agno3 to this solution here you can see precipitation occurs so from this experiment what you have seen by the reaction of nacl plus agno3 we are having agcl formation in this conical flask solubility product for agcl is a known value so once we are adding agno3 to this nacl solution we are changing the concentration if the product of this ionic concentration is more than the ksp value of agcl then precipitation occurs otherwise it forms a saturated solution no precipitation is occurs so this ksp is already known values in the literature for given salts this is the concept of ksp which we are going to use here in the acid base radical the second concept is equilibrium and in equilibrium lee jeitler's principle is important to know so here when this salt is dissolved in some solvent then it dissociates into its ions but complete dissociation doesn't occurs there is a degree of dissociation means some undissociated part is also exist when this undissociated salt dissociates that is known as forward reaction and if this dissociated salts combine together again and they form the salt then that reaction is called backward direction reaction this can be understood by this picture so here is the picture of a balance this is the equilibrium situation if we think that somehow the material which is placed in this pan is less and the material is more in this pan then what will be the situation the situation will be like this the first pan which is having less amount that goes up and the second pan which is having more amount that goes down so here it is less it is more 
इफ वी रियली वॉन्ट टू गो बैक टू इट्स ओरिजिनल और इक्लिब्रियम पोजिशन देन वॉट वी नीड टू डू इधर we need to add something to this pen or we need to remove something from this pen only then we will get back to this equilibrium position so here i am showing you this animation and this equilibrium position is represented by this equilibrium sign so lee shetler's principle suggest us that if we want to go back to the equilibrium position then we need to add something to that side which is up or we can remove something from the heavier pen to go back to its original position so here we are just considering the concentration vector and the same is the case with the temperature etc so somewhere else we are going to discuss this leach atlas principle in detail now we are going to discuss the common ion effect along with leach atlas principle what is common ion effect first we are going to discuss that so here in basic radicals in group 1 acid is used as a group reagent as i told you in my previous video so here is the hcl and it dissociates completely if any salt or acid base dissociates completely then we use forward reaction only no backward reaction is there and no equilibrium sign is there so it dissociates as h plus plus cl minus in the second group we are passing h2s gas to the group 1 solution this h2s is weak and it dissociates in equilibrium it is dissociated as 2h plus plus s2 minus sulfide ion so here is the equilibrium for this h2s only means here already h plus ions are present so the situation is like this in equilibrium it is balanced like this but already h plus is there because of the group 1 solution we continue in the right pen we are having excess of h plus and the situation becomes like this if we just want to go back to its equilibrium position then we need to remove h plus ions from the right hand side and if we are removing h plus so we have two choices one is this second one is this but here no backward reaction is there here backward reaction is there so only this sulfide h2s combined together when the reaction is going back to backward direction so here in this way we are coming back to its equilibrium position by removing h plus in the form of recombination of h plus and s2 minus ion now here i am showing you one example for this common ion here is fecl3 solution and to this fecl3 i am adding nh4 scn or ammonium thiocyanate you can see the blood red color of iron thiocyanate if i am adding nh4cl so nh4 is again there so here is a common ion so the reaction going back its equilibrium position now i am showing you the is how this h2s in the presence of already added hcl works so from this experiment you may have some idea how the reaction proceeds so here h2s if there is no other solution or common ion is present it dissociates like this and here is the equilibrium if there is a group 1 and we have already added hcl to this solution then the situation becomes like this so here h plus ions are already there in the group 1 solution and this solution we are adding h2s for the group 2 and because of the presence of h plus ions already this h2s dissociates less and the situation becomes because of the presence of this h plus ions the situation is like this this reaction just to equilibrate this goes into backward direction because of this backward direction we are having less dissociation of h2s gas and due to this less dissociation concentration of s2 minus in the solution is less if the ksp value for group 2 is lesser then the group 4 as we know in the group 2 as well as in group 4 in both the cases or in both the groups metal sulfides precipitate here a question comes to my mind 
why not all the sulfides get precipitated into the group 2 only so they do not get precipitated into group 2 only because of the less ionic concentration than the ksp value of fourth group because of the less concentration of sulfide ions only group 2 metal sulfides get precipitated since they are having less ksp value as compared to group 4 this group 4 we are going to discuss in the next slide so before moving to the group 3 we need to remove this h2s how we are removing this h2s gas this can be removed simply by boiling the solution of group 2 and uh, just to check whether all the h2s is removed we just dip our filter paper in the lead acetate solution and we keep it on the mouth of the test tube if it turns black then still h2s gas is there why it turns black because of the formation of lead sulfide which is of black color if it doesn't turns black then no h2s is remaining before moving to the group 3 we need to remove this h2s gas and for group 3 base is the reagent and what is base nh4oh and for it dissociates in equilibrium nh4 plus plus oh minus so here is the equilibrium but this nh4oh is added in the presence of nh4cl so why nh4cl since ksp value is less for group 3 hydroxides so less amount of oh minus is required because in the fifth group some hydroxides get precipitated as we discuss group 1 and group 2 same is the case here for group 3 in the presence of common ion this equilibrium reaction goes into backward direction or we get less concentration of oh minus which is sufficient to precipitate metal hydroxides of group 3 now coming to the group 4 we continued this solution so now what this solution have this solution already have nh4 plus and oh minus nh4 plus cl minus in the presence of these nh4 oh or axis of nh4 plus oh minus we are having this type of situation now and to this solution we are adding h2s gas which dissociates like this 2h plus plus s2 minus and if this is the situation it dissociates like this and because of the dissociation of this h2s gas h plus which are dissociated from here they reacts with the oh minus which is already present in the solution and water is formed removal of h plus ions from this side if h plus is removed because of this oh minus ions then the situation of this equilibrium becomes like this i again show it here in this slide so oh is already present just for the comparison i repeat this and here h plus s minus minus is added because of this h2s this h plus oh minus reacts and it is removed only sulfide is remaining if sulfide is remaining then h plus is less this side situation becomes like this if we want to go back to its equilibrium position then more dissociation of this h2s occurs and if more dissociation occurs more concentration of this sulfide ion. more concentration of sulfide is required because ksp for group 4 metal ions is high and therefore more ionic concentration is required and for that more ionic concentration more sulfide ions are required so that is why group 4 metal ions are precipitated in the group 4 that is in the presence of base and group 2 metal sulfide ions are precipitated in the presence of acid solutions because there is less ksp value for the group 2 metal ions so i hope you understand this concept here now further moving to the fifth group we need to remove this h2s gas again and in the group 5 we have ammonium carbonate so this ammonium carbonate again dissociates in equilibrium like this nh4 plus co3 minus minus so this is the equilibrium situation and this ammonium carbonate is added in the presence of nh4oh again because of this common ion this situation turns again like this so to go back to the equilibrium position this reaction go into backward direction so that we are having less concentration of this carbonate ion and metal carbonates get precipitated with less concentration of carbonate ions now i am showing you the group reagents so here dilute hcl since ag plus lead and mercury precipitated as their chlorides they have less ksp value 
and here in the group 2 and group 4 all get precipitated as they are sulfides for this group 2 we are having less ksp value and for group 4 we are having high ksp value so these metal sulfides as they are sulfides as per the concentration of sulfide ions according to their group and similarly for this group 5 ammonium carbonate in the presence of ammonium hydroxide and in the group 3 ammonium hydroxide in the presence of NH4Cl. So this is how you can understand the science behind the group division for these metal ions for basic radicals. So I hope you find this video helpful and informative. Please subscribe my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.